In this lab, I'll introduce some practical aspects of resistors, resistance, and Ohm's law. This will include experimentally generating a resistor's voltage current characteristics. The techniques we'll introduce here can be applied to automatically generate the IV characteristics for an arbitrary circuit element. This process is commonly called curve tracing. Resistors are usually used in electrical circuits to limit current or to set voltages to desired levels. Resistance is a property of materials which, as the name implies, measures how much the material resists the flow of current. Since voltage is used to cause current to flow, resistance indicates the amount of voltage required to move a given amount of current through a material. So less current flows through a high resistance than through a low resistance if the same voltage is applied to both. Resistance has units of ohms, which are represented by the Greek letter omega. Typical resistance values can range from ohms to thousands of ohms or millions of ohms. Thousands of ohms are called kiloohms and are represented by a K prefix, while millions of ohms are called megaohms and are represented by an M prefix. This is the symbol for a resistor. Resistors can have some voltage difference, V, across their terminals, and a current I entering the positive voltage terminal. Circuit elements are described by the relationship between voltage and current at their terminals. For resistors, this relationship is Ohm's law. Voltage is equal to current times resistance. In the lab assignments, we'll be mostly interested in the practical aspect of things. So in this video, we'll emphasize the measurement of resistance and some good data acquisition and analysis practices. There are several ways to determine the resistance of a given resistor. Resistors often have their nominal resistance encoded directly on them in some way. For example, many resistors have a series of colored bands painted on them which provide a code from which you can determine the resistor's resistance. The values printed on the resistor are, however, not entirely accurate. The actual resistance will almost always differ somewhat from the expected value. Therefore, when we're presented with a resistor, it's beneficial to verify its resistance with some measurement. Probably the easiest way to measure resistance is with a digital multimeter. DMMs invariably include a resistance measurement function called an ohmmeter, which displays the resistance of a resistor to which it's connected. It's also possible to apply power to a resistor, measure the resistor's voltage difference and the current through the resistor, and use the relationship between voltage and current to calculate the resistance via Ohm's law. In this video, we'll talk at least briefly about all of the above approaches. We'll spend most of our time, however, on the last option, since it's the most fundamental of the three. It illustrates the measurement of the voltage-current relations for a circuit element. That concept is very broadly applicable to lots of types of circuit elements. Special purpose instruments that measure and plot an element's current as a function of voltage are called curve tracers. This is a large wire wound power resistor. Resistors like this one, which are physically large enough, will often have the resistance value printed directly on the side. This is a 6.2 ohm resistor. Notice that on this resistor, the maximum power dissipation is also listed, 10 watts. This is another fixed resistor. It has a resistance of one mega ohms. Notice that the physical size of the resistor doesn't correlate to the resistance value. The physical size is more closely related to the maximum power that the resistor can dissipate. The one mega ohm resistor has a maximum power dissipation of less than half a watt. So far, the resistors I've shown have been fixed resistors. That is, their value is a set value which can't be adjusted. Resistors with variable resistance are also available. This device, for example, is called a potentiometer or a pot for short. These components have a resistance which can be changed by adjusting a screw on the side of the resistor. Most of the resistors we'll use in this course are these small carbon resistors. The resistance of these resistors can be determined from the colored bands on their side. Next, I'll talk about determining a resistance from the resistor's color bands. Resistors can have either three, four, or five color bands. This is a typical four-band resistor.
This means that the resistance value and its tolerance are coded in four colored bands on the resistor. The first three bands consist of a resistance value in exponential notation. The fourth band is the tolerance, which tells us the allowable error between the actual and nominal resistance of the resistor. The colors of the first three bands indicate the digits 0 through 9. Black is 0, brown is 1, red is 2, and so on. A complete table of colors is provided in the next slide. The first three bands are read as follows to get the nominal resistance. The general formula is shown here. The first two bands, A and B, represent a two-digit number which provides the mantissa of the resistance. The third band provides an exponent or power of 10 by which the mantissa is multiplied. For example, if the first three bands are brown, black, red, the value is 1 for brown times 10 plus 0 for black times 10 to the second power since red corresponds to 2. This is 10 times 10 squared or 1000 ohms. The fourth band is the tolerance. It's a number that provides the maximum error between the expected and nominal resistance of the resistor as a percent of the nominal resistance. A gold band, for example, means that the actual resistance value will be within 5% of the value coded on the resistor itself. As I mentioned previously, resistors can have various numbers of bands. This table provides coding for all possible variations. I won't spend time on this since if you can read a four band resistor, you can use the table to read any of the other codes. For a four band resistor, the first and second columns of this table indicate the mantissa and the fourth column gives the exponent. Now let's take a look at an example of using the color codes to determine a resistor's nominal resistance and then using a digital multimeter to measure the resistance. This resistor's color codes are brown, black, red, and gold. Brown is 1 and black is 0, so that's 10. Red is 2, so that becomes 10 times 10 squared, which is 1,000 ohms or 1 kilo ohm. Let's check the resistance with a DMM. In order to measure resistance, set the selector knob to the ohm symbol and insert the DMM leads into the COM and volt ohm ports. If the resistance between the leads is too high for our DMM to measure, as in the case where there's nothing between the leads, the DMM display reads OL. This stands for overload and simply means that the resistance is higher than the DMM can register. When I clip the DMM leads to my resistor, I get a measured resistance of 0.99 kilo ohms, which is 990 ohms. Since the tolerance band of this resistor is gold, the measured resistance is well within 5% of the nominal value. Now let's use a DMM to set the resistance for a potentiometer. The maximum resistance for this device is encoded on the side of the pot as three numbers. The first two numbers create a two-digit number. This two-digit number is multiplied by 10 raised to some power indicated by the third number. Our potentiometer is encoded as 103, so its maximum resistance is 10 times 10 to the third, or 10 kilo ohms. The actual resistance of the potentiometer can be adjusted to any value between about zero and that maximum resistance by turning the set screw on the end of the pot. The potentiometer has three terminals with which to connect it to your circuits. The resistance between the two outer pins is simply the maximum resistance of the pot. The resistance between these pins does not change as you turn the set screw. The resistance between the center pin and either of the two other pins does change as you turn the set screw. Since this is a variable resistor, we can't tell what the actual resistance is without measuring it. Typically, we measure resistance with a digital multimeter, or DMM. Let's do that now and see how the resistance changes. To measure resistance, we set the DMM knob to the ohm symbol, plug the leads into the volt, ohm, and com terminals, and then connect the leads to the resistor pins. I'll use the center pin and this outer pin. 
currently this resistance is about 5.2 kilo ohms. If I change this screw position, the value of the resistance changes. Now let's talk about estimating resistance from a measured voltage and current. Ohm's law tells us that voltage is equal to resistance times current. If we rearrange this, resistance is the ratio of voltage across the resistor to the current through the resistor, or R is equal to V over I. This is a circuit we can use to measure resistance. It consists of a voltage source used to apply power to the circuit and an ammeter to measure the resistor current I. If we measure the voltage V across the resistor, we can use that measured voltage and the measured current to estimate the resistance by taking the ratio of the voltage to the current. I'll demonstrate this process next. This is the circuit I created to estimate resistance. I'm using the Analog Discovery 2 Supplies instrument as my voltage source V sub S. I'm also using the Discovery to measure the voltage across the resistor using the voltmeter instrument. I'm using a digital multimeter to measure the current through the resistor. The A port on the DMM is connected to this red lead and the COM port is connected to this black lead. The circuit itself is extremely simple. It has one resistor. Its color bands are brown, black, brown, which corresponds to a resistance of 100 ohms. The voltage source is this red wire. It's V plus on the discovery. The source is relative to ground, so the negative terminal of the voltage supply is this black wire. Channel 1 of the Discovery's voltmeter, the orange wire and the orange wire with a white stripe, is connected to the resistor terminals to measure the voltage across the resistor. The orange wire is at the assumed higher polarity, so that has to be connected to the positive terminal of our assumed voltage on the schematic. The A port of the ammeter connects the V plus terminal to the resistor. Remember that on our schematic, positive current was assumed to enter the positive terminal of the resistor. The DMM assumes that positive current enters the A port. Those assumptions have to be consistent for the data to make sense relative to the mathematics. To measure current, I'll move the knob on the DMM to the A setting. Now let's set up the analog discovery to apply power to the circuit and measure the resistor's voltage. The discovery's variable power supplies are controlled by clicking on the supplies button under the welcome tab. I'm using the positive supply so I can disable V minus. The voltage level I'm going to use for V plus is 2 volts and I click on the master enable button to turn on power. The voltmeter instrument is under the voltmeter icon on the welcome tab. If I click on run, I'll start measuring voltage. I want the DC levels. I've got 1.98 volts across the resistor. The ammeter is indicating that there's 0.02 amps. Resistance is voltage over current, which is 1.98 over 0.02, or about 99 ohms. This is extremely close to the nominal resistance of the resistor based on the color bands. 